This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint an autumn leaf. It's gonna be a maple leaf and we're gonna get some really nice, warm, vibrant colors and textures on there. I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you can probably apply these techniques and this general approach to other apps and other software. If you want to follow along exactly as I'm showing you within this tutorial, then I've got some pre-selected colors here in this section. There is a link for these colors, this color file down in the video description. It takes you to my Patreon page and you can download it there for free. Otherwise, the hexadecimal codes are there too. Go to the value section within Procreate, type them in here one at a time, and you can piece it together yourself here. The brushes that I'm gonna be using are the airbrushing brushes, the soft brush and the medium brush. And also within the elements, I'm gonna be using the clouds brush. So on this A4 default canvas, we're gonna to go to layer one. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna use this dark color to begin with. We're gonna to go to our brushes. We'll go back to the airbrushing and medium brush, just the default settings. I'm gonna turn it down to 1% size and about 50% opacity. So we're just gonna start in the center of the canvas. I'm going to draw the stem first, a nice bit of a curve to it like this. Then. From that point, I'm just gonna draw a blob just so we know where we're doing the rest from. I'm gonna draw a line. Now, I'm not entirely worried about whether it's a straight line. It can have a few wobbles in it. It can have a bit of a curve in it. And actually that will look better than being a straight line. So there's our top line. And then I'm going to draw, again, another line outwards in this direction and a line outwards in this direction too. From this point, I'm also gonna draw a line with a bit of a curve pointing downwards this time. And another one here. And then last of all, a couple of lines like this. Now, I'm only using this as the, the framework. These lines I can get rid of. I can go to the whole layer and go to the properties here, and I can turn the opacity down or I can just delete the layer later on. It's just going to be used as a guide. So on that basis, I'm going to create another layer. I'm gonna put it underneath though. So layer two is gonna go underneath. So there's the layer we just created, but we're now on layer two. I'm gonna go back to my colors going to use this second color, which is this yellow color. I'm going to put that color up to 100% opacity, but we are going to stay on the medium brush. And maybe I'll just put it up to the 2% size this time. So from this top spike, I'm just going to create perhaps a taller spike in the middle, but then two spikes flanking it on either side. So once we've got those in place, we'll go to the spikes on either side. And we'll do something similar for this. So we've got the main spike and then it will dip down and create roughly two smaller spikes, just like we've got here. Now again, they don't have to be completely symmetrical. Could be that it's really close on one side and then further away on the other. So we've got a similar effect. Now we can bring them further in and then have them connect roughly like this. We could always exaggerate the spikes a little bit if we needed to as well. Once we've got the rough placement, then we can just go ahead and exaggerate them a little bit if we need to. From this point on either side, we're just gonna create a bit of an outlying spike here. So we're gonna dip backwards and then out quite far on either side. Then this is gonna dip backwards and join in with a spike that correlates with this part of the leaf, like so. Then we're going to have these as the main spikes near the bottom. So we're just gonna do a bit of a curve so it joins in there and joins in there. Then we are going to do a curve to join them up, but it's gonna have a midpoint spike as well, or it's a little bit actually closer to that edge, but we'll just take it there and then maybe join it in like that. So again, spike it here and then join it in. Now it's very easy when you start to look at it at this point, start thinking, well, I've got the rough shapes where I want them to be, but when I really look at it, then it looks now a little bit spread out. And that is exactly what I see within my piece. So it isn't actually that much of a problem. We can go to that layer, go to the transform tool. We'll get it on the free form and I'm just gonna pinch it in on either side. I think that's gonna roughly balance up the shape of my leaf a little bit better and we'll just move it back towards the center. Obviously, we need to do that with the initial layer too. So we'll go back to that. We'll go into the transform tool and we'll just pinch that in until it roughly aligns with the outer layer as well. 
we go back to layer two and I'm just going to drag this color to allow it to fill. Now you notice it's gone completely outside of the shape. I've not let go of the brush so I can just slide it back until the point at which it lands exactly where I want it to on the inside of that shape. What you might need to do is just go and fill in some of those areas. If it has a bit of a gap between the fill area and the initial outline, then perhaps you just need to go in and tidy those up. So now you've got that overall shape in place, you can actually go to the eraser and choose a different eraser brush. So I'll put it on the medium brush, choose the size, and if you want to just fine tune some of these shapes, you can just take away, compare it to the other side. Does it feel like it's roughly balanced? If there's any bits that have ended up looking a bit untidy, then you can just subdue them, nibble away at the edge until you're absolutely happy with the overall shape. What you will probably find is that the more texture and the more detail you add, then the better it looks overall anyway. So I wouldn't anguish over it too much, but if you want to do some adjustments just to refine it a little bit further, then this is the point at which probably you're going to be able to do it the easiest. So I'm just trying to sharpen up some of these corners, make them a little bit more refined. So I'm using the eraser brush just to sharpen them up. Just like I say, nibble away at some of those edges just to make the effect a little bit neater. Now it's not gonna to be totally symmetrical, so sometimes the spikes will curve one way and not the other, so it doesn't really matter if that happens. So now that we've got to this point, I'm just going to untick those lines and I'm going to redo them better. They were good as a very rough starting point, but I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna go back to my colors. I'm gonna pick the darkest red on this end of this, this selection of colors. I'm going to, with my medium brush, put it quite low, at about 1% and about 50% opacity. And on this new layer, I'm just gonna start placing in these parts of the structure of the leaf, but do it better, more neatly, to align more precisely with the spikes we now have. So again, everything grows out from that point. And we'll just take it right to the very end of the spike. Doesn't matter if it has a few wobbles in it. Again, it still doesn't matter. So I'll just rotate it to make it a little bit easier. So we've got one up the middle, and then we've got main points that arrive there, and then we've got another one that arrives to that spike. So it doesn't grow out to every spike. And then the next spike is gonna be down here, so I'll just rotate it to make the movement a little easier. And I'm going to do the same on this side. So again, from here to here. Now I'm only using the basic brushes within Procreate here, but if you want to check out some extra textures, then you might want to check out Brush Galaxy. It's a brilliant brush subscription website service with over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes. You can save over 90% of the cost by subscribing and paying monthly, and it's got tons of different categories such as portrait, pattern, texture, nature, and loads more. So if you head over there now, get your first month free, get instant access to 12 brush packs worth over $300. The links are in the video description and the comments. And then the last main one is gonna go down to this corner, like so. However, we do have other spikes that will require branches that, or sections, part of the leaf structure that actually have little veins there that connect to them. So we've got a couple of main ones here. So they obviously need something quite substantial going to them. Perhaps we could turn it down just a nudge, so it's not at zero, it's not the, the lower end of 1%, but it's just a hint smaller than it was. And we'll do the same on this side. We've got another one here, so perhaps we could take another branch to connect it here. Have it again, branching off to connect here. Anywhere where you've got a spike, it needs to have a connecting piece. Now they're not all gonna line up, so you can have that one joining there, another one a little lower down. Again, we can have one connecting here, perhaps one connecting there. And then obviously then we've got the ones at the top. So maybe they could come from a slightly different point. They don't need to be aligned exactly the same. Like this. Once we've got those, we can do other ones that obviously are going to be there, but invisible, but they might not necessarily join up precisely to anything. So they slightly misalign perhaps where they grow from. And they generally grow up, grow up to these corners perhaps, and then disappear, fizzle out to nothing. And in between here, we might have more that are generally just go so far, and maybe splinter off. Little ones that seem to go or start and then disappear. Maybe one here, 
maybe one here that just seems to disappear to nothing. We could have a series of them. As they get more towards the end of the, the leaf area, they're going to get generally a bit more subtle, so you won't notice them as much. So just press lightly. So obviously we've got it on 50% opacity, but it's that and a mixture of the pressure that you use with a pencil as well. So once you've got so far with that, we can duplicate that layer. And with the layer, the first one underneath, we're going to go to our adjustments, we're going to go to the Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and we're just going to slide it in a little bit. I would say to about, actually about 6% will probably do. It just softens it in slightly. Okay, we're going to create another layer. I'm going to make sure that this new layer is directly above the first template layer. And if I click on that layer, you'll notice we have an option called Clipping Mask. If you tap on that, what it does now is it links the layer that we're now working on to the shape that we have underneath, which means if I show you and demonstrate, it's impossible to paint outside of that leaf area. If I backtrack just to show you how we did this, you could even go back to this layer first so you know it's exactly in the right place. So you tap on the layer, you've selected it, press the plus symbol, you've now got a layer immediately above where you want it to be. Tap on this new layer, activate the clipping mask. You can see a little arrow has now appeared. It is now linked to the layer that's underneath. So now again, when we paint on it, it only places that new de de detail inside that area, which is brilliant. So we'll go to the elements brush and the clouds brush. We'll go to our colors. We're gonna to go to this orange color. We're gonna build it up quite gradually. And we're gonna put it at around 15% size and around 40% opacity. And I'm just going to start tapping in some of this texture. And you can be really quite free and easy with it. It doesn't really require any neatness because like I say, it's gonna be now impossible to go outside of those initial shapes. So you can really be a little bit haphazard with this. It's not a concern at all. Now, I'm not gonna take that color down into the bottom section. I'm gonna reserve this color for mainly at the top, and then it starts to break down, break apart as we get a little bit lower down. Maybe just a hint of it coming into the, the ends and just a little bit here and there, but generally it's gonna be for the higher parts. I'm not gonna change layer. I'm going to go on to the next color along, which is quite a bit darker, and we're gonna certainly focus our attention up near the top. and the end of those spikes. Maybe we can sharpen the focus of the brush a little bit, so we'll put it down to 5%, zoom in just a little bit so I can show you this. Now what I'm going to start doing is applying this texture in between, so we've got the little branch sections and I'm going to place the shading on the in-between sections. So I'll do it a few times so you can really see, so the edge is fine but then I'm gonna apply it a little bit in the center, but perhaps just leave, in a general sense, a little bit of a lighter area close to where the actual structure of the leaf is. So you can be pretty rough with this. It's one of the best things about using the clipping mask is that it allows you the freedom to be pretty loose with your brush marks. So again, I'm just aiming for the middle sections here mainly. Once I've built up the general effect, we can always go back in with the lighter colors and the, you know, build it up to be even stronger in some places. Or if you want some subtleties perhaps of just a hint more there, then you can go in and do that a little bit later on with this orange color again. But we're just trying to be, get the first pass, make it quite dramatic initially, and then we can go back in. Okay, so perhaps I will create another layer at this point. So again, tap another layer. It is important, again, to tap on the layer and select the clipping mask. Again, now it is masked to this initial yellow layer. So we can move along to so the colors. I've got a variety of different reds here. 
So you can play around with them, but I'm just going to be a bit bolder and, and move it along the scale to the second dim from the right. And I'm really going to start perhaps with a slight reduced size of brush to about 3% and it's still at the 40% opacity. But I'm just going to be perhaps a little bit more precision based with some of this texture. I certainly want it at the top at the end of the spikes. But then I'm, I'm using a tapping motion now. So it's the natural or the actual texture of the clouds brush plus the way I'm applying it now that is building up this texture. So the edges of the leaves, I want perhaps a little bit more of this darkening. I can alternate the brush size, I'll put it back up again to 5% or somewhere in that region if I really want to block in some areas. So alternate between the larger size brush and the smaller. If you just want a few selected blobs where you want them to be. And then if you want to fill in a slightly larger area, you can just increase it again. And you can alternate between the brushes, the layers rather, so you can go back a layer and you can use some of these warmer reds. Perhaps we just need a bit more of an underpinning of a red here in places. And perhaps we could move between these as well. So we've got three different types of red. We've got a, more of an orangey red. I think I want to apply some more of that to really give it a glow on that layer underneath. And just build it up to the point where you feel happy with it, really. Go back to the orange. Start building this in, like I say, on the in-between areas of these shapes. Perhaps really go to town with the orange. I'm just lightly pressing on now. Perhaps we don't want any areas that look flat, so I'm applying texture all over. I'm going to go back up to layer 6 again with the darkest of my colours. And just to keep applying this texture. I feel like I want to create another layer. On, the, on this layer, I'm going to go to my fourth colour along, so this warm orange. I'm going to go to my airbrushing and the soft brush. I'm going to put it at around 2% size and around 30% opacity. And I really just want to go in and I want to create some slight warmth, a hazy warmth around these main parts of my branch structures within the leaf. I feel like it just needs to be softened in there slightly, in places anyway. And a good thing I can also do with this now is I can reduce it down to 1% and they're going to be subtle little branches. In fact, I'm going to turn it down lower on the 1% and I can really add in some smaller parts of the veins. Perhaps that's a bit too fine, a little bit more, but still within the 1%. Press lightly and there's going to be these little subtle branches and veins that come in here in a way that we couldn't do before. So we're zooming in just a little bit just to really add a bit more effect. So I'm just adding a few more here, as you can see. It's a subtle detail, but I think your eye does detect them. Even when you're just zooming out and you look at the overall effect, I think they add quite a bit. So a good thing about this is that you can play around with the layers too. So I've gone back to layer two. I think I just want to ramp up the brightness of that yellow, in fact. So now I see it all in context, I feel like I want to go to my hue saturation and brightness, affect the whole layer, turn up the saturation a little bit to about 60% and just the brightness up just by 1 or 2% and I feel like it's just creating a bit more vibrancy and I think it really works better. I'm obviously missing the stalk of the leaf, so I'm going to go back. I'm also staying on one of the other layers that I've created, so layer 3 will do. I'll go back to my darkest of colours, keep it on the soft airbrush but I'll put it up to about 2% size and about 80% opacity and I'm just going to draw this in. In fact that's too big so I'll turn it down to the lower end of 2%. Create a stalk for the leaf. Perhaps it broadens off near the bottom, thins out, something like this. Again with maybe a, a medium brush you can just go in there, tidy up the edges if you feel it's not neat enough. Go back to the brush, I'm just going to bit broaden off where it joins here and here, something like this. Might even go back to the yellow and just have a hint of that in the centre area here. Back up to layer 5, back to my elements brush, the clouds brush. I'm using the orange colour 
I'm going to turn it down to about 3% size and about 40% opacity. And I'm just going to continue to add some little fine tuned textures until I'm happy with the overall effect. Just again, switch between different colors, fine tuning, find the points and the level of texture that you think works the best for you. Do bear in mind that if you were to look at one particular leaf at one point, another few days time or another week's time, it's all these encroaching browns and oranges and reds will probably look more dramatic. So even the same leaf on a, diff a future day, a different day is gonna look different than this. So you choose the level of decay, the level of browning that you want to add. There's no right and wrong point for it. Perhaps just zoom in and put a couple of random, slightly darker spots just creeping in here and there. You will find that it won't be entirely consistent. You will get some random spots too. Okay, I'm going to leave this particular tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button. Check out the links for my Facebook group and my Instagram down in the video description. And I hope to catch you back here soon.